Hey, good evening. Welcome to another How the Rock the Virtual Stage. I'm the Trigger, Rich Bond Trigger. Great to have you with us on this Wednesday night. And we are giving you the playback of the show this evening. So you are in for a treat. Bill Gertine is with us. The 800-pound gorilla success. That's what he's best known for. We will get into that later on in the show tonight. But How to Rock the Virtual Stage, if this is your first time with us, thanks for taking the time to join us tonight. What we're all about is helping to equip you with speaking skills, presentation skills, tips and tricks to bring your virtual stage even more alive and make it more compelling for you as a speaker, as a leader, as an author. We all know that we're all pivoting to the stage and we all now work virtually but we want to make it such an engaging, exciting thing. And there's a lot of things that we can help you with. I've been a broadcaster for 30 years. I'm bringing my broadcasting skills, my many years of public speaking and bringing it all together to help you to do this better. Tonight, we're going to talk about technology. Technology is something we need to always keep up on now, but some people get really freaked out about it. And the amazing thing about what Bill's going to share tonight is the most amazing part of the tool he's going to talk about the ATM mini is your one finger will give you more power than ever before. We all know there's times when you get on Zoom calls, you lose Google Meets or whatever platform you're on. Some of the changes and uh, transitions are really clunky. They just don't work. Everyone can see what you're doing. It just doesn't quite match up. The ATEM Mini or the Pro version allows you to do all this seamlessly with a click of a button. And it's not overly expensive. So you're going to hear that several times tonight as Bill gets into our demonstration and coaching. By the way, if this is your first time with us, you'll get 30 minutes of interactive discussion and coaching with Bill and myself. The second half of this, we're going to open up the microphones and you'll get to hear on this playback the questions from the live crowd. And I encourage you to join us on any week, 6 o'clock, Wednesday nights. We go live for one hour, 6 o'clock Mountain Time. Coming up next week, Asha will be with us. Asha is a trainer of the virtual stage for corporate people. Yeah, she works in the corporate world and she works with people that want to do this better for their corporations, for their CEOs, for the executives. So she's a corporate trainer of the virtual stage. You'll want to be here with us. She's going to give us more tips and insights. Coming up at the end of the month, you don't want to join us. We're going to go traveling halfway around the world. We're going to Australia. Janet will be with us, and she's an author and speaker as well. But we're going to talk more about some of the global things of the virtual stage. Sometimes different parts of the world do different things. And since we can now travel virtually anywhere, one of the things of the speaker is we want to know how to better connect culturally with people through this lens. And we're going to talk about some of those things and the things that she has learned as a virtual presenter. We have a lot more great guests coming up. So you always want to follow us along. By the way, we always follow it through Eventbrite. You can follow us on Eventbrite. You can follow us through our Facebook page. There's other ways to connect. We'll have all that information in here as well. But tonight, Bill Gertine is going to show us some things. Now, Bill is an author. He's a speaker. And he's a sales expert. He knows how to motivate and train people. And as we've gone virtual, he's had to pivot and change a lot of what he does as well, like many of us have. Now, Bill is going to show and demonstrate us the ATE Mini, all right? And the, uh, also, he'll talk about the Pro. He does have the Pro version, but he's going to talk about both. There's some subtle differences. They're very powerful. And as we jump into the conversation tonight, as we do this playback for you, we're going to jump in right behind the scenes. We're going to take you right where you want to be. And you're going to see exactly what he's doing, how it's set up, and he's going to break down the whole layout for you. It's absolutely amazing. And again, don't be worried about the pricing because we bring it up many times during the interview. It's not as expensive as what you think you can. So I hope you enjoy this playback tonight. This is for you, How to Rock the Virtual Stage. Bill Gertine, the 800-pound gorilla success. Here he is talking about technology tonight. Take it away, Bill. Now, the view I have right now that I'm showing you is as the, it's really the view that I have as a speaker. So if you look at this right now, it's as if you're watching through my eyes. I have a computer over here that I'm using for camera four on my screen, which I'll show you in just a moment. But I have three other cameras, one, two, and three. And so this looks like MSNBC right now, uh, but it, and it kind of is. 
so that you can switch back and forth between those four views. You could actually put a fourth camera over here if you choose to. I choose a PowerPoint presentation, which I'll show you in a moment, that you can overlay onto the screen very easily. And when you're in Zoom, you don't have to mess with the share screen thing. It can just go zap right into it. It's pretty cool. So the two top windows here, this is the preview screen. So before I switch into that on the program side, I will look at this before I do it and say, mm, yeah, that's what I want. And then zoom when I put the button in, it goes into program. Now on the bottom here are some other things which I'll talk about later, but one of the things that the ATEM Mini or the Pro does not have is a volume, or a, a headphone jack. I don't know, there must not have been enough room for one. I don't know. Uh, but it, it, this is the volume control that I can see that I can then control what my volume level is. And Rich, before we went on, I asked you what the volume was and what would be comfortable for you. And that's how it worked out. So those are the levels in which I have that. So let's talk a little bit about how this works individually. Each one of these has a particular program and they're assigned to the four cameras or the four inputs that are there. They're all done via HDMI on the back and I'll share with you what it looks like here in just a moment. But if I push camera one right now, this is the main camera right here, camera one. So if I wanted to fade or wanted to switch then to camera two, the way I have this set up, I have a camera over here, which I've mounted to my desk, which I'll share with you here in a moment. So as I go back and forth, I can talk to this camera. Now I've got my hand that I'm bringing over here to my table that I can go over here and be able to go very seamlessly from one to the next. Now, there are also some features here on the A10 Mini which really make it easy to mix and it's kind of fun to be able to do. I'll bring you to this camera and I'll share with you where they are. On this unit, there is an auto function which allows me to mix different, unit, different scenes back and forth rather than just cut right to one or the other. So if I'm back on this camera right here and I want it to blend from one to the other, I could do this and it seamlessly goes from one to the next, just like MSNBC might on, on a cut from one to the other. And then I can go over here and do a really cool thing that way. So it's really a fun thing to do now. And there's all kinds of different kinds of, of mixes back and forth. So if I wanted to do what's called a dip, so it goes from white to this color, and go back, then I can certainly do that. There are some other, what's called wipes. And so if I wanted to go wipe to here, I could do that. And then it goes wiping back. So there are several different fun things to be able to do with this. So this camera- I'm gonna for a second, because sure. we had one person through the chat box say, this is the most expensive show I've been on today. Now, <laughs> go back and just recap for one second here. The price of that computer setup that we're using for all this amazing stuff is how much? Dude, this little unit here at the A10 Mini, the, the basic unit, is $299. And that's not bad at all. Not at all. It's very inexpensive. As it, and many people in the broadcast industry are pretty amazed at the kinds of things that it does. Now, one of the things that it lacks is some of the really powerful features that, dis that, that discourage things like what's happening right now from happening, and that's the lag that's going on here. I'm sure it's something I'm doing, and I'm gonna be researching this to make sure that I get it right, but it is not this little unit here. I can tell you that for sure. The now, 599, double the price, you, you're allowed some recording capabilities and some live streaming capabilities with this. Many people that do live shows on streaming, a lot of Twitch shows, doing video games, a lot of other things that have two or three guests also will have that sort of thing where they'll go back and forth between the two guests. And so if you have a camera over here, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with uh, person number one, and I might go over here and talk to person number two, or you have a table set up where there are two guests and you can toggle back and forth to your two guests, that makes it able to be done. It looks really expensive, but it's not. It takes some time to get used to, but it's really been a, a, a wonderful tool for me uh, up until just now with this lag, of course, but uh, I'm gonna be having to deal with that for quite a while. And, and I'll be dealing with Rich's ribbing about this, uh, you know, this tech segment and not being able to deal with the tech, uh, I'm sure at some point after this recording. Well, and now let's let everyone catch a breath here for a second, because I think one of the things that the first time I saw you was, you're going through all these cameras, all the switching, tell us 
the, the levels of cameras you're using. They are not all top level cameras. There's an amazing no. trick you have there. In fact, this is probably the problem. This little camera I have here is a cheap little thing that I bought 10 years ago at Best Buy and probably has the first ever HDMI out. And so, in fact, it's so bad, you see the numbers and stuff on the screen? Every time I use this, it defaults back to the regular settings. I can't get rid of the numbers. <laughs> so don't use a cheap camera. This is an insignia, horrible camera. What most people are using right now is called a DSLR, which are the, uh, the, the, the really good digital, mostly mirrorless cameras or DSLRs. They're, they're, and there's many of them, and there's plenty of places you can go to find out where the best cameras are for that. But I'm going to pick this up, and I'm going to use this crappy camera to show you some of my other stuff that I have going on that will help you figure out what you might want to do. So this camera right here that I have, this is a Canon Vixia. This is a G20, and it is probably the best camera I have. One piece of advice I can give each of you is that if indeed, and this has got an HDMI, you gotta be sure that you get an HDMI in to be able to do it. If you don't have any HDMI cords, you're gonna buy a lot of them. So this one thing that I found is you have to have an HDMI out, and you wanna try and do the best you can in matching up the cameras so that they're the same brand, or the, really what you want to try and do is get two of the very same camera. So when you do that two shot back and forth, there's not a lot of difference. Now here's the second camera that I have. This is a teeny tiny, this is another Canon Vixia, but this is a different model. This is a G500. You see that as I, well, I'm gonna do the switching back and forth, if you had noticed, looking at the switching that we did, that the lighting and, and the, the, the color balance and things was pretty close between these two. Mainly it's because of the brand being the same and the models being similar. I got lucky with this one. You might not get as lucky with some of yours. So if you really don't want a, a, a difference in picture from one to the other, try and get two cameras that match up pretty well. And as you see, I kind of jerry-rigged this thing in my office to where it's, you know, this little, like a stand that I just kind of screwed onto my desk. Uh, but it works really well and I can kind of just pack it up and keep it attached to my desk when I'm doing what I do. So that gives you some indication of what it's like with the cameras. Uh, now also, but, you know, when you did this the first time, the big aha for me was, because they're not all the same quality, they're not all the same brand, but there's a magic button that you said, if you put the high quality one first, Right. The rest of them will sync up behind it. It's the order of the cameras that you put into the mini, correct? That's correct. But the input of camera number one, which is what I'm showing you right here, this is my best camera. Uh, I'm going to be upgrading cameras soon when I get the money to do that because that's where I'm going to be getting the best results. But that best camera, then it, with the frame rate and all the other things, it then syncs that with all the other cameras so you don't have to go in and change things around. It reads that one and says, ooh, everybody else needs to do the very same thing, and it does that automatically. The software inside the A10 Mini does that. So the highest level goes into number one, and everything else That's right. is pulled to that level. Great. That's correct. So if you look at the back here, I'll just kind of give you the idea. There's, these are the four inputs for the four either cameras or for the input, and you'll see that I have camera four I use for my PowerPoint specifically so that I have a dedicated uh, – computer just for that. There are two microphone ins. I'm using a lavalier during this one. And so you'll see that this is a mini input. This is not an XLR. Those are those three pin things that all the musicians use. Those take a powered input. This is, you want to try and make sure that if you're going to get some sort of a, 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 a microphone, that you get one that doesn't require phantom power. Phantom power is when you have to have a preamp or something else. So use a, a lob or something else that doesn't require phantom power. And so you'll see some of the other inputs here. These all four, these are all HDMIs. This is the monitor that you see behind me over here that has all of the sh camera shots on it at one time. And then this is the USB out. This is called a USB-C. And this is what's going to our computer on Zoom. Now, this is really important for everybody to understand. This A10 Mini reads, but the computer reads this unit as if it was a webcam. 
So all the stuff that's going through here and around and into my computer here is reading it as though it's in a webcam. So all this that when you so you go into Zoom and you can select then the source that you have for which camera. And for many of you who've been on Zoom, you understand that there are several sources you can choose, different microphones for audio and for video. You can go in and choose Blackmagic Design, which is the manufacturer of this, and it's very easy to do. Now, let me ask you another question because people are asking about all the gadgets and toys. And I know you're using different monitors and laptops, some very old in fact. So again, talk about, this doesn't have to be thousands of dollars. You can actually piecemeal many old components to still pull this together, right? Let's talk about that because I didn't have a lot of money to start this. And you know, I, I, I'm not a millionaire when it comes to doing this sort of work. And so what I did is repurposed two of my computers and took a TV from my spare bedroom to be able to do this. My office, this is not, I mean, this, this is not a green screen. This is my actual office, okay? So I wanted something that I would, that would help me to stand out as a speaker. I had seen where people have used backgrounds like this, but they used larger televisions and had these stands for them. And I said, man, I don't have the money to do that. So I stole this 32 inch TV out of my spare bedroom I cleared off a couple of the bookshelves that I had, and so I put this there, and it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yes, it really does. And so it's nice and clear. What you want to do as a speaker is not to put too many things on there that are hard to read. In fact, that screen is probably the harder to read one that I would do that. I would generally use some pictures here or something that sets the stage for when I'm speaking. So when I have details and I need to bring bullet points to light or put a script, because I do some sales training, so I want to put a sales script up on the board, this is too small for that and it's too detailed. And so what I'll do is I will go to camera four. Camera four is essentially what we have as the PowerPoint camera. I have a dedicated computer separate from the Zoom computer that is running this PowerPoint and I run it as much as I need to and with the slides that I use that I need to show detail. And when I come back and I need to do this and just show the photos or the settings that I need to make, that's when I use this 32 inch monitor. Now that's a great uh, way to show that because as we know on Zoom, you can share documents, you can go to live feeds, drop in videos, but it's also very clunky. You're literally, yeah seamlessly transitioning with one click of a button way easier. Yep. And I'm really enjoying the fact that it's, it's so clear. It's not grainy. It's, it's exactly what you would get in a PowerPoint, only it's full screen and people can control how much of a full screen that is. As you all know, with Zoom, you can control the level to which you see how big the screen is, whether it's the speaker view or the audience view, and you can control that size of the screen if you're a participant. And I allow people to do that just by using these controls back and forth. So I just got a, a, a comment in the chat box. Their brains are going dizzy. They love this, but there is so much to take in. So pause for a second, help us understand how you got your own head wrapped around this. How did you literally unpack the box and go, amazing, now what the heck do I do with it? Well, I spent 50 hours learning what you just saw. So hopefully what I've done is cut a little bit of the learning curve off for you to be able to do that. If there were a couple of things I would mention to each of you, it would be start with a single camera and a PowerPoint presentation. Don't worry about the cutting back and forth. If you wanna do one of these things in the back, that's kind of cool. But to be able to have the capability to switch back and forth with a PowerPoint just like this, to be able to go to your presentation, whatever you're talking about, and then to come back and to say, hey, here we are, that's still pretty cool in and of itself. Once you get comfortable with this, then I might start thinking about, well, let's add a second camera and we'll do a little extra here to be able to make a little more of depth to what we're doing. But I wouldn't think that, oh my gosh, this is where I'm going to be right away. Work up to this. Start small and work up to it. 
And that's a great point. Now, you also mentioned recording. So on Zoom, we record on Zoom either through their cloud or to our laptops. But you said the mini acts as a recorder itself. Is that completely separate? So could you do Zoom cloud and do mini, or does it only grab the one? Well, it, it, you have the ability via your own Wi-Fi to be able to go directly from the A10 Mini to your computer. I haven't trusted it that much yet. You can't, I, I, Wi-Fi is a little spotty sometimes, which may be part of our problem here. But the, you can use the very same USB out to use your own recording device. Many people use a capture card or I have, and I'll just, I didn't plan on bringing this out, but for those of you who remember these, this is an actual like real like drive that has like spinning things inside here that can actually be used in addition to, to be attached to the A10 mini to record directly this kind of presentation or whatever else you might be doing. So to me, that's gold because again, you're showing that you can take the old low tech by our standards today and you bring the low tech, the things you have in your boxes, you can pull them out and bring them into this so again, you're not spending a bloody fortune. That's right. So there's, there's a lot going on. And I'll share with you one thing back here. If people are thinking, oh my gosh, this is way too much technology. I could never do this. I couldn't do this when I first started. And I'll just show you some of the lights. I've only got two lights. This is the one over here that's lighting up this side of the bookcase. And then over here on my other side, as this motorcycle goes by, uh, the other side of the, of the room. I don't have my other lights on because on occasion what happens is it gets kind of yellowy and I'll share with you the difference because lighting's going to be important as you start. So let me take my, my lav mic off and I'll turn on my office lights and you'll see the difference. And while he's doing that, don't forget everybody that we are going to open up. We're going to bring you in as panelists. You're all going to join us. So in a little bit, we're going to have your cameras on. You'll be able to turn on your microphones and you'll be able to ask Phil some of these questions that are coming in right now. So we want to make this really interactive in a few minutes, so don't go anywhere. And back to you, Bill. So some people like this kind of look. It's slightly yellower, but it, it works. I just choose not to do this typically. Uh, one of the tenants that they talk about when you're doing this kind of work in a virtual setting is that you want to look directly to the camera. So you'll see that my setting, if we look at the cameras now and, and see the way I've got it set up, You'll see that my camera is up here, but the zoom is down here. So I have to resist the urge to look at you, Rich, and look up here instead. So that's one of those uh, things that you want to do when you're just starting out. You want to be sure to look way more up here into this camera and way less at you. And that takes the practice. That's why you roll tape, roll tape, roll tape to practice oh. it and review it. Because that's where broadcasters, as I say every week, we have a leg up. We've been doing this for years. Now that everyone's coming on in, like you said earlier, we're looking at camera angles wrong, the cameras are off to the side. This takes practice to do those placement things. Yeah, figure out your own room. What do you have that would work well that doesn't have a lot of distraction? You know, there are many people that have said, wow, I really like your bookcase. And then others have said, wow, you have a lot of distractions there. I don't think I could be able to, to concentrate. You have so many books. You're looking at your family picture. and you're not, you're not. It's entirely up to you and whatever you're comfortable with. I think generally simpler is better, but you have to find a place. And many people have found corners of their rooms or wherever they happen to be in their homes to be very good for some kind of texture in the background. In fact, you've probably seen that in many of the things that people have done at home while they're here in quarantine, uh, where they've got, you know, they just, they take a corner of their home and they just use that. And it's kind of interesting. You've got two walls in which to work. And so just experiment with things, but just be careful with lighting, especially. The lighting really makes a huge difference, even in the camera that's kind of borderline for me in terms of quality, this, uh, the G20 that I use. Well, let me just point that out, Bill, for a second, because I am in one of those, I've got one wall, one roll, so I can use a full stage presentation. I can do a full keynote in my studio I've created, and that is one of the wonderful things is you do more of the camera angles. I could have a camera over there and use the stage the way you're describing it, and it really does come down to your preference, your studio, and you can slowly expand it. That's right. 
you know, I can't move very much, but this is kind of a cool different angle that I can use to be able to prove a point or talk about something there that just gives it a little more depth and I can continue to talk like this. The third camera, and I'll just share this with you that I have seen probably most effectively, is taking that third camera, this crappy camera I have back here, and using it in the very back of the room to show some depth and kind of a different angle for just a few seconds every now and then. Let me share with you what that angle looks like. And I'll have to take my mic off once again, to show you, but here it is. So if you'd imagine for just a moment that I am there, this is kind of an interesting angle. People don't get to see this very often, but it shows a little bit of kind of what's going on behind the scenes. I might set it over here, but I wanna be sure that I can be seen over here so that people get a little bit of a different angle on what's going on. You've probably seen that before with some of the internet marketers or people that have done YouTube, if they have multiple cameras, that they've done that sort of thing. But that, I find that to be very helpful. Well, and again, uh, the one other thing I want to have you show is before we get rolling, because people, their, their, their minds are blown. They have a lot of questions for you. But I know teleprompters are becoming a thing now. People don't like just having paper. I saw you had your whiteboard over there, which I have a whiteboard as well. There's a lot of ways to do this. But you do have a teleprompter that you, again, have to get an old tool to bring about great technology. You remembered. Yes. For those of you who are musicians, you will really enjoy repurposing your old music stand from high school uh, as a way in which to hold your teleprompter, which is right here. I actually use a program on my uh, MacBook uh, Mini, or the, uh, I'm sorry, my iPad Mini called Prompt Smart. It actually hears me and rolls forward automatically. It's not very expensive and it's really cool. It's, uh, you have to be within earshot of your computer to use it, but that's what I use. So this is my music stand that's literally right in front of my camera. And I just generally put the music stand up a little bit further so that I can actually stare right into the camera lens when I'm doing teleprompter work. And the big thing about it, because I've tried some other teleprompters, the fact that your voice controls the speed and the rate sets it apart from everything else I've tried out there. When you mentioned that when we had first met, and that was a game changer for people doing teleprompters. We want to make sure we put that information later on the show as well, because more and more people want to have that content ready to go. So one tip about Prompt Smart: make sure you have a decent microphone that is within earshot of your voice you get a really good take eight minutes into a 10 minute video and then it doesn't advance because it didn't hear a certain syllable and drives you nuts. We are moving everyone into being a panelist. Welcome to the big show now. Uh, in a moment, we're gonna be uh, taking your questions because I know you guys are taking notes. You guys are getting a lot of great information, but we wanna make this as practical for your situation as we can. So please turn on your cameras if you will, please and uh, it's gonna bring everyone in. And uh, we want you to get all the information you can out of this by either raising hands or giving a gesture or whatever, uh, because we want to make this really, really practical. So as people are filtering in right now, uh, don't be bashful, don't be shy, Bill doesn't bite, I don't bite. But this is where, again, Bill, I don't know if you've been watching the box go up, there've been some great questions. The minds have been blown tonight. Uh, <laughs> technology is our friend. There's so much we can do here. And that's why I love the fact that this is one finger, one button, and it's so seamless. So let's open it up to everybody here. Uh, just raise your real hand, not a virtual hand, if you would. Uh, okay, I see George. George is definitely going to want to uh, come on in. George, good evening. Welcome to the show. Uh, ask what you need to ask, ma'am. Thank you, Rich. First, I have a couple of questions. One with the DSL camera. When you hook it up to the computer, do you need extra software so that it's acts as if it's a webcam. No, you don't. It, most of the time, DSLRs are so smart, when you put in the HDMI, it reads it right away. There's no special software that's needed with the A10 Mini. Okay. It's pretty because, astonishing. That's great, because I have a DSLR. I'm trying to hook it up as a webcam, but it needs a little bit of uh, extra software or something to well, do. Well, here's a great tip if you're thinking about buying this. On the Blackmagic Design, website. It does list compatible cameras okay. to this. 
And so if you go to blackmagicdesign.com, I believe these are made in either Australia or New Zealand. I don't recall which, but they have a very robust U.S. division. Okay, and it's also available on Amazon because I looked as we were speaking, or as you were speaking. Uh, and so the mini, because that would be what would be in my my price range at, at this yep. moment. Of course, I will eventually upgrade because that's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> uh, um, with the mini, is it as easy to switch back and forth as the the professional? It's exactly the same. They look identical. The only difference is this little bitty part buttons over here that work as the recording device or the live streaming unit. Literally, you could all, if you didn't know the difference, you'd think they were identical. There's just a few more buttons on this side. There's more electronics on the inside, but they operate identically. Okay. Great question, George, because we went through that the first time and it, it was amazing to just know that side is like a bump out on your keyboard. And it has a couple more bells and whistles, but that's really it. Who else has got a question for us tonight? All right, let me bring you on here. Welcome to the show, Sandy, and uh, you're on with Bill. Oh, we can't hear you, though. Oh, hang on for a second. It double muted you. Okay, Sandra, you're on. I know, Sandra. <laughs> yes, here I am. Okay, my question is, you know that screen that you show that you can look at all the camera shots? Is yeah. that mandatory? No, in fact, on the, and this is a great question, George, you'll wanna know this, in the mini regular, the 299 mini, this view is only available on your software on your computer, which is outside of that. So you only get this monitor view. One of the things you get with the pro view is this whole cool screen thing. So in answer to your question, Sandra, if you just wanted to have the monitor view, your right. A10 Mini, the $300 version, will give you just this screen right here in full view. So the monitor view is your like live on-air view, basically. The other one is your production. The one that you're showing with the Pro is production. The other one is strictly true on live, right? Strictly what you're seeing on camera. That's right. There are ways yeah. in which to program that so you can have this view on a separate computer but that, that is uh, one of the features of the Pro that people really do like. There's a lot of people that love this feature because there's several other pieces to this. And it's probably a good idea to go through this right now so everyone understands what this bottom panel is all about. This says Media Player One. I know it's hard to read, especially because of my crappy camera over here. Uh, but it, this, you can actually create lower thirds and graphics like Rich has got behind him there by you just grabbing these and being able to throw them in at one time. It's pretty cool the way it all works. This is a timer for those people who are live streaming and want to be able to know where they are on their live stream and, and if the live stream is actually on to make sure that it's still live. This is to show you how much recording time you have left. So if we put this thing in here, this old unit here that I showed you earlier, if I plug this in, it would actually show up here as to how many minutes and hours I have left on here to be able to record, which is pretty darn cool. So that, again, that's on the pro level, but that is your whole production studio. Again, he said ESPN earlier, and I've been in the ESPN trucks. That's exactly, that. they have the live, they have the pre, they have the other things off screen. What he's describing in your own home, you can do what ESPN does. Pretty wild, but huh? Considering considering the mini rather than the pro. Okay. Uh, you wouldn't have that screen, but you would be looking at, for example, what I intend to do is record. This has allowed me to just record the session with the two camera shoot and the PowerPoint slide. Um, but I can see that at all times. Because I'm I'm recording Zoom. I mean it's recording the whole thing. Yeah. So I don't have to go back and splice the camera shots. That's right. I do Zoom. I generally use the recordings I have on Zoom because it's just easier for me. I've not yeah. used that capture card yet or that capture device. I know it works. I just haven't chosen to use it. Okay. Okay. Wonderful question. Uh, anyone else got a question here? Just raise those hands. George, I think you're coming back on here. Okay. You're unmuted. You're on, George. Okay. Uh, I got a little confused with the monitors with between the Mini and the Pro. So... I'm sorry, could you kind of show me what the- Oh, that's okay. Like? That's okay. 
And it's a great question, George, because I did not want to confuse you on this. When you get the basic mini, the output here in your monitor shows only what you have going at any one time. It'll show you what's live, whatever your live picture is. Okay. If you get the pro, what comes out of this monitor is what I've shown you here, and that's the multi-view. That's what they call that. Yeah, okay. Thank you, because I really like the multi-view, but I don't think it's quite in the budget yet. <laughs> I totally get it. And if you like the multi-view, there with the software that comes with this, you can actually program your computer to give you this multi-view so that you could actually see that on your computer screen at the same time that your monitor is showing whatever your, your program is at this time. That's great because actually I've got two computer screens, 32 inch here in my office. So that would be great because I could see one on the one, on one and then, and then the, the, cool. the so, so Bill cool. to, to be as simplistic as possible. Um, how many, laptops or computers would be bare bones so you could do that and one other or what's the best way to say strip it down one you only need one you got to have one for zoom okay you can use this camera and use zoom and actually have an out from this camera to be able to use your powerpoint i don't want to trust it that much though I would, because I want to be, uh, and I don't know how many of you are just a little uh, sheepish about that. I would want to say separate from my Zoom right here. I'm going to use this computer to make my PowerPoint work because I want to be sure when I want to go to that, that it goes to that. Perfect. Well, I want to have that control. Now, one of the other things that we didn't talk about, Rich, and I want to talk about this while this screenshot is there, is that there is a picture in picture feature within the ATEM which is pretty slick and it's so simple to use. I'll show you where it is on the unit itself so that you can kind of see what it looks like. Let me give you a, a close up of this because it's, it's right there. You see a picture in picture, those, a group of six buttons right there. You see where there's a, a square in each one of the four corners that you can choose and that's as easy as it is. So you could put your little picture in picture in any one of the four corners of the screen just by turning this button on and choosing any one of those four things. Let me share with you how it works. So yeah. if I'm over here, and I'm here, and I'm in this, e the, the, this screen, but I would still want you to see me, it will show whatever camera one is plugged into. So camera one is the basic shot that will always be your picture in picture. So let's turn on the picture in picture, and here I am. So I could be talking here and doing my thing, and I could be in any one of these four corners of the screen just by pushing the button one way or the other. See, and that's the magic of, you can do that on the fly. So if your graphic changes while you're teaching a lecture, depending on where you want to be in the quadrant, you can literally do it on the fly. That's like, right. So I'm thinking, ooh, I changed this. That's not good. I'm going to go over here instead. Yes. See, that's incredible, and it's not a big bulky piece of equipment. This is relatively right. small and very lightweight as well, isn't it? It's super light. It's, it's about the size of a box of Kleenex and maybe about the, si about the weight of two or three boxes of Kleenex. That's all it is. Um, okay. Oh, by the way, the picture in picture, something you need to know. The, this, you know, it looks pretty small right now. I'm just kind of teeny tiny bill up here in the corner. And you're thinking to yourself, oh, no, no, I would want to be bigger or I would want it to be in a different place or a different size. The software allows you to change the size of the screen. So you're not stuck with this teeny tiny picture of you. If you, don't, if you want it bigger, you can go in and fairly easily make it happen. I, I wouldn't say, I mean, if you're having trouble figuring out Microsoft Word, this might be a little challenging. But if you're pretty good at like some of the Microsoft stuff, you'll be able to figure this out. That's, that's a great comparison. Who else has got a question? Oh, let me bring you on there. And Angela, you're on. Oh, hang on. It jumped on me. One second. Okay, you should be on now. Okay. Thank you so much. This is good. I am just really starting out with all of this stuff. So excuse me if this question is very elementary, but um, tell me like 
what would you say the basic configuration is? I want to make sure I understood you. I thought I heard you say uh, one camera and two computers, one to run Zoom and one for your PowerPoint. Yes. And if you're smarter and you know how to do the PowerPoint and the Zoom from a single computer, you could probably figure it out. I'm not that smart or I'm not that trusting of a single computer. I guess I'll put it that way. But, but the way that you described with the two computers, that's what allows you to go straight from the camera shot to the PowerPoint without having to share your screen and all of that, right? That's correct. That's right. So I can do this and I can, uh, and so I'm using two computers doing this. The screenshot you're seeing of me is from Zoom on computer one. The certified virtual presenter photo is actually in my PowerPoint on computer two. One last question. Sure. How do you control your PowerPoint? How are you advancing slides if you need to? Ah, that's the great question. I am so close to my computer right here. I have, you talked about, Rich was talking about using things in your house. I have two pub tables that I bought a couple of years ago with my wife when we had a party at the house for her 40th birthday. I had a, like a 70s disco party, so I bought these pub tables and they're a little higher than normal. So not only do I use these for my monitors, I also use them for my computer. So I'm literally right next to my computer and I just hit my, my return bar like I normally would to advance my slides. Okay, thank you. Now, Here's another, now, since you've asked, I'll talk a little bit about this other computer over here. This is my third computer, which is tied directly to this monitor in the back. I have an advancer that I use to be able to put on my desk right here so that I don't have to reach all the way over here to do that if I can. I have it set up to where I could do it manually, but this is my little safety net right there. See, and that's one of those tricks that if you have it off camera, down below camera, this raises the presentation level to so much greater because Zoom does not have it clean and slick. Um, you've already got it open up, you've got it ready to go, but you don't see it until you see it. And that transition just makes us so much more professional. This does make it TV quality now instead of Zoom quality. Uh, and just by that clip of the button, that's, that's gold right there. George, I thought I saw your hand rise up again. Was that correct there, sir? All right, you're back on, sir. Is there anything I need just in case I figure out the, the budget for the pro? Is there anything else I need to make that work? A uh, good camera. I, that I understand. But you can still use the webcam and the D or the DSLR with the, the pro, right? Uh, yes, you can. I, I don't know how you might... If you have your webcam, now that's a, that's a good question. What, what I have seen is if you have a webcam that you're using via Zoom, that's a different input. You will not be able to use the little webcam that you've got on your computer to be able to run through the ATEM. Okay. okay? You'll have to have a separate. Now, if you have a camera, a, uh, hopefully an HDMI quality webcam that is separate from your computer That's you could run that through and use that as an input yeah it's not attached to the computer it's okay. a, a logitech very good you so, could use that then do be careful though because if it's not compatible you might be disappointed with the quality it's got to have an hdmi okay so let me just clarify on that because a lot of us are using usb plug into our laptop shoot with a uh, webcam is this USB really easy plug and play friendly or are we talking, make sure you got something else here, just to clarify. Go to the Blackmagic website, see if your camera is, is one of those that is compatible with it. There's so many different models and designs and camera styles. Uh, I'd be remiss in saying which ones work and which don't. You really ought to check with Blackmagic before you buy. Great, you should be a lawyer. That's a great description. <laughs> right? Disclaimer, right. I should have that right. as a lower uh, third on the bottom. Hand dropping up here. Sandra, one second. Sandra, welcome back. You're on. Okay. Um, oh my gosh, I forgot my question. Oh yeah, for for microphone. If you don't want to use um, a lavalier and plug it in, you know, and all that. What about using a Yeti? 
you may use your own microphone that is a USB mic, just like you would if you were normally using a mic on Zoom. You choose the microphone then and in the Zoom controls. So when you have the when you choose your audio and choose your video inputs, you would just choose your Blue Yeti as the input that you use for that. Okay, the other question I have for you is it sounds like you said you've got three computers and two cameras. Well, there are only four slots. Right, because I'm not using all the slots inside the ATEM. Okay, great question. Let's do the math. <laughs> camera one, input one. Camera two, input two. Camera three, which is normally way over there showing the large view of my whole setup, third input. Fourth input, my second computer that has the, the PowerPoint that, that I use on camera. The other two computers that I have, one is being used for Zoom, exclusively for Zoom, and my ATEM is running into that computer and it is reading it as though it is in a webcam. Okay. The third computer that I have over here is directly associated with this screen, this 32 inch screen only. For those who know the language, this is a slave to this monitor. That's perfect. It's plugged into the, the, to the ATM or not? No. No, this has oh. nothing to do with the ATM. It's totally separate. My Zoom computer is plugged into the AM, ATM as if it were a webcam. It does not require one of the four inputs. And your PowerPoint computer is also plugged into the mini, right? That's right. It's, it's input number four. Okay. Okay. Three I've got cameras, it. one computer. Got it. Now, if you wanted to be really special, <laughs> you could have one camera and three other computers if you wanted to and do three different cool things. I don't know why you would do that, but it's possible. Yeah, I, I won't get that creative. <laughs> I'm just looking at two cameras and two computers. Right. Welcome back, Al. You're uh, with us on the Q&A portion. If you have any questions about what you heard before you jumped on out, but of course the replay will have all the information there as well. Yeah, our brains are exploding. There's so much great stuff, right? I know, Al. Let me unmute you for, uh, there you go. Oh, I'm, un I'm unmuted, I'm good. All right, did you, did you have a question for us tonight? Um, I, I sent one in earlier, but I can't remember what it was. So don't worry. No, I, it's good. <laughs> um, Bill, with our time left here, we've got about 10 minutes here. What would be some key ingredients that we have not touched on yet that may spark another question or just things that you say, boy, I've learned this. Let me help you out. I'm still trying to figure out the lag thing and it bothers the heck out of me. I wish I had an answer for it. I'm sure somebody who knows more about it than I do can say, oh, you just go here and here and here, and you can do that. The software that comes with Blackmagic is pretty incredible. There is a port, and I'll show you the port. Hold on. There is a port that you can then use to be able to connect this to your, right here, into your internet. So you'd need a Cat5 cable in order to do that. So you'd want to be able to run direct to your internet source rather than Wi-Fi. When you do that, what ends up happening is any computer that you have in your house that has the same Wi-Fi signal will pick up the fact that you have an A10 mini and will say, ooh, I see it. And it will unlock all this cool software that you can then control audio and video it's amazing. I have no idea how it does that, but it does that. So within that, you can actually dial the volume or the audio signal to be later, to be delivered later than the video itself. It can actually help sync the audio and the video together. Now that was a new software update that Blackmagic put in about three months ago. I was pretty excited about that because I thought that'd be great. It'll be perfect and I will be able to sync it up every time. But it only syncs about eight frames. And if you do the math, if you're doing 60 frames a second, 
Well, eight frames is like about a, well, I don't know, you math wizards out there can tell me what that is, but it's, le it's like an eighth of a second. It's not enough, at least for my circumstance. So I'm still working with this, but I'm getting to the point now where I'm feeling super comfortable with this program. And I can't wait to be able to do this program called the seven voices in your head, because that's my gig. That is what I love to do. It is a program about peak performance and mental health and the things that I have learned along the way for people that get their, their gray matter gets in the way of their own success. And it uses sound effects. It uses music. It uses all kinds of very cool things to be able to get the point across. And so I'll have more visuals to be able to prove my point with that. No, no, just, just go deeper on that because now you're explaining performance, uh, not just technology. Take us a step further in there. Take, take us behind the scenes of your performance of that because sound effects, pictures, camera angles, and that's a whole different layer of production, which is where the stage should take us. Indeed, I'm very, very excited about the virtual stage and where I'm going with this program. I originally planned this to be live, as everyone did, with sound effects that I control all through here with voices that come from the speakers on the left side, on the right side, which I actually talk back and forth with. And I control, there are 135 individual audio pieces that I control with my PowerPoint. It is an incredibly detailed presentation, which I need to give fairly precisely, but also with some humility and some warmth so it can't look like a, a, an ultra performed sort of piece because I have to bring people in to do that. When March 15th hit and I, it was very obvious to me that I wasn't going to be able to present this anytime soon, it really hit me hard. I was very disappointed and dejected thinking that this is just not going to work. And so what I've been able to do, whether it's a good thing, a bad thing or otherwise, is to actually use some material now from what's happened to all of us during this pandemic and incorporate that into this virtual presentation. So now, rather than simply counting on the audio portion of this to come through, I actually have an oscilloscope with each one of the uh, voices actually showing itself on the screen behind me here. And so it's actually something I'm listening to and, and watching at the very same time. So I've visualized the audio portions of that which are speaking back and forth. And I have seven different voices that I've had recorded by professional voice actors that are the, the voices that I hear inside my head. Now, that just talks about the creativity. And I, I tell people that the, the virtual stage right now is limitless. We have only begun to scratch the surface and you have just illustrated perfectly the dramatic potential. Like I know George has done comedy, things like that. The potential for this is unlimitless right now. So you are really pioneering a whole new direction. Well, I mean, there's one other thing that I sometimes don't do because I've been told by speakers bureaus that it's too airy fairy and I shouldn't do it. And I'll ask the group here. Maybe this is something you guys can tell me whether or not it should do or I should do it. I, the, the finale of the live performance of this is a live piano performance of a parody of Piano Man, which I have rewritten for the seven voices and I pre-recorded each of the seven voices singing behind me in harmony as I'm performing it live at the same time. Okay, so everyone right now with the virtual hand, you think that's cool and each should do it. Everyone use the virtual hand or real hand, whichever one you wanna do, but let's give them some love and support here. I, I think that's cool as all get out. Yeah, happy hands, happy hands. That is awesome. <laughs> Hey, uh, Bill, well, I'm going to bring uh, Al on for a second. He shot me a note through the chat that I think is going to be perfect. Uh, Al, you want to un unmute yourself and uh, share that bit of wisdom there, sir? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So while you were talking there, I uh, used this, um, this device. I don't know if, you, if you've heard of it. It's called the Worldwide Interweb, and they got this, uh, they got this new thing. It's called the Google. And have you ever used the Google? So I asked it a question. I said, uh, what's this latency issue that they got going on with the ATM, uh, uh, the ATEM Mini? And uh, so Aaron Parecki has a YouTube that he put out on June 10th, uh, just uh, about five, six weeks ago. And it says, audio delay fixed in the ATEM Mini Pro firmware version 8.2.3. So I put all the uh, information there for you. And he apparently, in his um, YouTube video, 
talks about the methodology and the firmware patch that will fix that. So I put that in there. You can, uh, you can watch the YouTube video. You got the tech specs there and you can see if in fact it's real and it is fixed or maybe he's just blowing smoke, I don't know. But uh, that's the stuff that I looked up and uh, if it's real, you know, you got it there. So that's very I, kind of you. Thank you. I will absolutely check that out. There you go. See, that's why I love doing this live show. I, I love doing it because you never know what's going to happen. So there, you, you threw the trouble out and Al goes Googling for us, right? And I think Sandra, you may have another question. Yes. Go for it. Yes. Uh, when you don't have the lag, what did you do different? Because you don't always have the lag. Is that right? No, I, I do everything the same. I just, I, 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 you know, well, I say that I will do more of this. I will hide myself. And so my audio is just fine. It's perfect. And it, you know, you can't tell that the lag is happening right now because you're right. not seeing my voice move. You're not seeing my lips move and my voice doing it something at different times. So I will attempt to do other camera angles like this one and may show you this rather than show you me talking. So that's, I, I'm trying to take the, I, I guess the, the onus away from you looking at me personally and having you look at things like this. Okay, so, but what you're saying you're, is you're you've had the lag, same content. you've had the lag problem before. Yes, and I, I have not had a chance to perform that session, the seven voices, and have this problem. I've, it's, it's almost like it's every other time that I'm on, this happens. I don't know if it's a Zoom thing or it's something else, but certainly I'm going to have to perform on Zoom and I'm going to figure it out. Yeah. Well, whether it's with Aaron Parecki yeah. or somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. You will. Well, with the final moments we got here, uh, and thank you everybody for your question, but Bill, I want to give you a chance again to share a little bit about more of the voices and just uh, tell us more about how we can connect with you and what it is you do. So these wonderful people know more about Bill besides the tech guru bill well i appreciate that the uh, the thing and I, what i'll do is i'll actually show some or share some things on the screen so that you have an opportunity to kind of see those uh, i have such fun doing what i do and if there is the opportunity to work together i would be pleased to be able to do that i do have a website for both of these things that i do and i'll share that with you now uh only because it, it's kind of fun to be able to do i i um and I'm doing this, so I'm, I'm delaying this so that I can share some of the other stuff with you guys. So, um, so you see this, and if I come back, there we are. Uh, I am known as the 800-pound gorilla. Many of you may know this, and, and you can find my stuff at www.the800poundgorilla.com. Uh, you may connect with me on email with, at bill at the800poundgorilla.com. Uh, I also have a website devoted to the seven voices. And so if there is interest in that sort of uh, keynote performance, uh, I have two different versions of that, one for sales departments and another for the general public at large. Uh, as you know, salespeople sometimes get in their own heads and get in the way, and that's where my, the bulk of my experience has been. But I've been told that this message resonates very, very well today with audiences of all kinds, especially high school and younger. Uh, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to being able to, to prove that uh, in some way. And so if there is any sort of referral you might give my way to be able to share that message with others, uh, you can see more of that at the7voices.com, T-H-E number seven voices.com. You'll see some video of the performance there, some snippets, and decide whether or not it's something that's worthy of performance for the group that you have in mind. Wonderful. Hey, before we let you go there, Jamie, uh, I'm going to ask her to share what was your greatest takeaway. I'm going to ask everyone to do that tonight, if you would. What was your best takeaway tonight, Jamie, to uh, have Bill on the show tonight with us? Um, I think the best takeaway is how relatively simple and inexpensive it is to up our game and why that's important to set us, you know, above everybody else right now. Awesome. Thank you, Jamie. I, I know you have to run. I want to make sure... We got you in. Uh, George, I'm going to slide down to you next. And uh, George, what would you say was your biggest takeaway for the night with Bill? Oh, I think my biggest takeaway was, when, as Rich does, I want to perform like you guys are standing. But if I have to run a PowerPoint or something, that gets very sluggish when you have to do it on the computer with a mouse. But with a 
switch of a button, that makes it a game changer. So thank you very much, Rich, for, for your information tonight. Fantastic. Sandra, what would you like to share as your big takeaway for tonight? Well, actually, that you offered, Bill, uh, your seven voices. I'm working on a high school program, and I hadn't even thought of that, and it would probably dovetail. Oh, my goodness. I just, it just opened the doors. <laughs> Thank you. What we, could do. we love making deals here on the show. We love connecting people, and uh, that's all part of the fun. And Angela, let me get you. I'm going to unmute you or try to unmute you. There, you are on. What was your big takeaway for the night? Um, thank you so much. Um, I think the biggest takeaway was really how easy it is to go from the PowerPoint to the Zoom because I've been trying, you know, I, I was on another uh, program when they were talking tech and the guy was a real tech person with very few English skills and uh, I could not follow it, but I understood exactly what you were saying. So that's my biggest takeaway. Well, my English are really good, so I'm glad you took something away. And, you know, not that you dummied it down, but you did make it human common man language. It was really, really important on my show. So well, I really and, and I don't mean to make light of that. Thank you for your comment. I, I, I wanted everybody to see that I'm not perfect at this yet either. And I'm continuing to try, and I think that's all of, any of us can do is to put as much effort as we can into this or as much effort as we can afford to put into it and just give it a shot. You learn so much by doing and sometimes failing that it just behooves you to just get up and give it a shot. Al, what was your greatest takeaway for tonight for the bit that you started with and you came in at the end of the show? What was your greatest takeaway tonight? Okay, so my greatest takeaway I'll get to in just a second because when I first started, it was like, oh my God, do I need to spend more money, number one. But then number two was like, oh my God, this is so cool. I really, I got to spend more money. I got to get this. And then I was like, no, it's just more cables and more wires and more lights and more stuff. And like, oh, I don't want to, yeah, I really got to do. But my best greatest takeaway was just start with a second camera. You don't need to throw everything at it at once. Just start small, just add a second camera. And that, you know, I think was my best takeaway was, you don't have to go full TV studio on day number one. You could just add a second camera. And uh, for me, yeah, I think that's the, the best takeaway for me. I can start small if, if I actually have that within me. I mean, that's the greatest idea. Uh, now I'll just have to see if I, can, uh, if I can fulfill that. Great. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Bill, I'm going to give you the final words here in a moment, but I want to remind everybody, Asha will be with us next week. And Asha is a speaker, coach, trainer. She works with corporates, and she is rocking the corporate stage in a way that many of us would like to. Uh, the corporate stage is now growing because it used to be all the conferences, seminars. Uh, obviously, those are all gone. She is now already inside that network now, and she has found secrets and tips to enhance that experience so join us next week, 6 o'clock Mountain Time, Mountain Time again, and uh, we, will, we will always have the interaction, the great content, and then at the end of the month, we're going to Australia, and I have another surprise coming up. I'm not going to tell you this week. you got to come back, but we have another really, really special, special event coming up as well. Bill, thank you very much for sharing with us tonight. I know there's so much. Yeah, please, round of applause, happy hands for them. Uh, <laughs> What's the final things? And again, tell us how we can directly get in contact with you again. And uh, if you have any links or anything you want to drop in the chat, please do that tonight as well. You're welcome to reach out. Bill at the 800 poundgorillacom That is my email. I'm working on shortening the URL, but it is unique and nobody else is going to take it. And so it's, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, I, by the time we connect, I'll probably have the latency thing fixed because I'll have a video to watch and I'll know exactly what to do next. Perfect. Bill, thank you very much. Remember, everyone, if you hit those three dots in the chat box, open up the chat box, hit those three dots in the far right-hand side, you can grab all of the information that people put, emails and links and stuff that Al put in there. Make sure you download that before we sign off here, and then you drop it into a document. You have all the information. You grab those links. It's really, really easy. Uh, and again, we'll be back here next week. We thank you for taking your time. We look forward, and if, and if I can help you in any way, Contact me, rich at richbontrigger.net. Very easy to find the trigger. 
Uh, I'm leading, I'm coaching, I'm helping equip you to do this better. That's my passion. That's my goal to bring my broadcasting skills, help you do whatever it is you're envisioning doing. So do not hesitate to reach out as well. So until next week, everyone be safe. Have a good one. Thank you again, Bill. And uh, see you next week, everybody.